So, uh, welcome. Welcome Thank to you. the Songwriter Series. Um, you are the Gander Boys. Yes, we are. And Danny and Dennis. Yes. Um, and so, uh, this is a conversation uh, with a, a very strong theme about song, uh, what does song mean, about songwriting, uh, the tradition as well, uh, the songs that have been passed down through generations. Um, and creating songs as well. Um, could you start by giving me a little history of some of your musical background? Well, when you say background, um, what's your expectation? Uh, well, uh, I know in Uganda you have a very strong uh, musical tradition. Yes. Um, so I presume you, you were brought up yes. with, with music. Yes. Um, and uh, maybe you can introduce the instrument, okay. uh, the tradition, this tradition, okay. traditional instrument here. Yeah. Yeah, no, in Uganda, music is very central to our everyday life. So it's really music and dance. And um, we sing in every situation and we dance in every situation. So there are dance routines for morning, for weddings, for parties, for celebration. And there are chants that go with them. Um, so there is a variety of traditional instruments, but the easier one to carry around, the, the more melodical one, is the adungu. Oh. And um, it's a traditional instrument, mainly uh, from the northern part of Uganda. And uh, this instrument is beautiful in a way that it evokes uh, an energy of happiness and uh, it also calms down... Um, mental stress, you know, uh, and uh, it's used in, in, in treatment for mental health um, back home in a, not in the typical concrete uh, setting, but in a natural setting. Mm. So yes, and that's the Adongo. Music is very central to everything we do, and uh, we chant to identify with our tribe. So for instance, each tribe, uh, each tribe has clans, and each clan has a drum beat that it identifies with, and uh, it also has um, a, a, a rhythm, a chant rhythm that it identifies with, which probably in other places we've gone uh, are referred to as anthems. You know, so yes, music is very central. Mm -hmm. yes. And so there were certain songs that you would have been brought up with. Yes. I guess there was a kind of, uh, were they like traditional songs that have been passed down over many generations? Oh yes, over many generations. For instance, Uganda has uh, various kingdoms and tribes, but uh, the biggest and the largest tribe is the Ganda Kingdom. The Buganda, they are called the Baganda. And the Baganda stretch back a couple of hundreds of years or thousands in that, for that matter. But uh, many songs you know, um, have been passed on, storytelling songs, songs that evoke thought, uh, songs that teach you how to live on the land, songs that alert you about the wildlife, you know, in the land, uh, songs that uh, educate, you know, and uh, uh, songs that alert you to taboos, you know. So yes, uh, many chants we do have been passed on from generations to generations. And of course, we also do in chants that will be passed on so the tradition stays. And, and when, you, when you say, I mean, like, with, for example, obviously, uh, I'm playing the Kora here, yes. which has its own oral tradition, yes. uh, many myths and legends and stories that are, are passed mm -hmm. down with, with different Kora pieces. Um, is, it, is it the same uh, with your tradition? Oh, yes, it is. It is definitely the same. It's so locked, a sound and rhythm are so locked to the core of our being and our, our traditions and, and our ways and our norms. For instance, the king in my land is called the son of the drum. That's the, that's the meaning of his name? No, it's one of the titles. Right. You know, Omoana Wengoma, son of the drum. So that really shows you how far back these rhythms and chants go and how central the drum in music is to our existence. For instance, when you're visiting one of um, a very historical place called uh, Kasubi Tombs, actually, I think it's a World Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. 
what the the, the very first um, it's, it's tombs where our kings have been buried over over a couple of hundreds of years, and the very first um, you know part you come across as you get in is called Muziwazali um, Ampanga, and um, I hope I got that right. And uh, the drum, you know, is, is right there. And when the king comes and all the royals, you know, they walk down to the sound of the drums. But these drums are significant. Oh, by the way, the other beautiful thing is there are messages, you know, that were, you know, put in these rhythms that are interpreted spiritually, you know, by um, the, the what, what should I call them, the shamans and uh, the priests, mm. you know? Mm. And uh, these messages are, are passed on. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really... In different um, patterns. Uh, in different yeah. patterns, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really central. And, and when you say chants, are they actually chants as in the, the specific meaningful words that are... Mm -hmm. That are recited over and over again as opposed to songs. Yes, they are. They are chants. They are meaningful, specific, you know, uh, words, uh, particular rhythms, yeah. And uh, the others are just sounds, mm -hmm. you know, that don't have words but refer to mm -hmm. exactly what they are meant to refer to, mm -hmm. yeah. So music and rhythm uh, are really, really core to to our existence, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so we've grown up to it uh, we've sung around the fire it's tradition in the village to sit around the fire mm -hmm. and, uh, that's when the knowledge is passed on <coughs> in the evening you know in the evenings usually was it after having a bath mm -hmm. yeah you know and then they would work out who hasn't uh, done their homework or who hasn't done their piece of work and then there is singing and then the storytelling but this, this is what I would call the informal education. But at the core, and what made it very interesting and attractive to the, to, to the youngsters is the music, mm -hmm. you know, where the knowledge is passed on. And these are things that stay with you all, all, always, through, all yeah. through your life. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way they are prepared and the way they are delivered. And it was in both of your families as well, so that you have musicians and music and instruments and singing in your families that you were brought up with as well. Luckily enough, we share the same family, so we just grow up together around the same music. Mm -hmm. We are from yes. the central, we are Baganda. Yes. The what, sorry? We are, we are from the central, central kingdom. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's like the central area. Yes, yeah, the central okay. area. Okay. So then you then, um, uh, as the Ganda boys, then you developing your own songs as well, and you, obviously you're singing in English as well as your traditional language? Yes. So, um, taking you back, our dear colonial masters did not promote uh, the, uh, the, the arts and the culture. Well, I think the French did quite a bit of that in the Francophone countries, yeah. whereas we were taught to learn a lot more English and a lot more English culture. And so there's this dark cloud that was painted around our culture and our music. So, of course, growing up, um, you, you're more inclined to what school is the Mariah Carey, the LL Cool and the, and the beautiful African Western, uh, no, Western instruments. Yes, and yeah. the Western, the guitar, yeah. the piano, the, mm -hmm. you know. So, but luckily enough, we were double-edged. As, as a routine, we were rooted in our culture, but we, we thought that the interpretation of proper music and proper success in music, you, you just had to do it the Western way, mm -hmm. you know. So we, we carried on, took on this pop sort of approach to music, tried to copy the closest that we could, that is the American <laughs> style, <laughs> and, you know. And it, it goes very well with, 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 our, with the youngsters in our country. But when we got here, we realized that, first of all, we couldn't match. Mm. And then secondly, we were, seemed like we were lost. So we started trying to find ourselves. But in the process, luckily enough, we get invited at the BBC, where we were supposed to be consulted to help with the sharpening of a script uh, called um, Moses, Moses Jones, Jones. Mm -hmm. BBC primetime drama. Yeah. So while we are there, this drama is about Uganda musicians in the UK, 
during Idi Amin's time. While we are there, they are trying to ask Nigerians to come and do the Ugandan music. Mm -hmm. And we asked, what? why? Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, Ugandan music is lost. We, we don't have its core. And we can just about get the Nigerians to do a little bit. They're still in touch. But you were very... And we're like, okay, what do we do in order to sharpen? So very quickly they tell us you need to reroute and get back to that lost beat of you, that real music, the traditional chants there. And we're like, okay, good enough, we could tap into it easily. And we're like, give us a try. So the executive director, Craig Proess, who is the producer, uh, who was the music, uh, who was scoring the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had Amon Walker. Uh, very interesting, we had Matt, Matt Smith. Smith who was just about to become Doctor Who. And there we were with all these guys in studio. And they were like, we'll start recording and let's see whether the, you, you can come up with something that we will like and mm -hmm. make part of the, of the program. We started to chant and it made sense. And uh, Craig got really interested. He decided to record right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says he recorded it rough, but when he took it to his studio, it was perfect, it, it was perfect and it was in <laughs> tune. So uh, from that point on, we became part of this great drama that went ahead to have nominations. Uh, the sound, the music got nominated for BAFTA, mm. Royal Television Awards. I was like, you know what? And Craig was very excited. So we dived right into who we are. We started doing our traditional music. Craig invited us over, became part of us. Mm -hmm. We created the first album, mm -hmm. played the Berlin Stadium mm -hmm. Culture Festival, mm -hmm. played Houses of Parliament, mm -hmm. took our culture forward and our chants. Here we we combined two, <laughs> the English and the African So chant. that, mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, actually, while at the BBC, yeah. we needed to interpret to make it easier for the viewers to understand. Mm -hmm. So we then needed to come up with lyrics that right. sort of explain. So that's when you started introducing English lyrics, English lyrics into, into, into music. Chance. So I'm glad you brought up Craig as well, of course. Craig yes, Cruz, yes. a renowned film music maker <clears throat> and producer yes. and, and musician who's a, a good, very good friend of mine, old friend of mine. Um, and that's the reason you're here as well, of course, through that yes. connection. Mm. And so... Um, so Let's come to the the first song. Should we? This is one of your own compositions. Yeah, this is uh, it's it's uh, knowledge. Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. Two hands. We should play you something. Yes. And join us, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> come on with the chorus. Yes. So, which, what's the first song? It's it's called Two hands. Two hands. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Yes.
First time you played the chorus. It's the very first time we encounter in the yeah. chorus. Yeah. Yeah. Very humble. Then it's been a long, long time coming. Yeah. You, you have been to Uganda. You've travelled many, many countries, man. I have not been to Uganda. Right. One okay. day to go there. Huh? Uh, okay. In Africa, I've just been to uh, Gambia and Senegal. Oh, wow. Senegal. I've been to Gambia. Cora yeah. and also uh, Morocco. Okay. Um, so, because I love all the connections in, in my own exploration of yes. different music from around the world, different yeah. traditional cultures, I love all the connections, mm -hmm. you know, different rhythmic connections, different uh, musical connections. Yes. Uh, Morocco, you can see the connections that go all the way through to South America mm -hmm. and, uh, and all the different, the way different music has traveled as yes. well. Um, and of course, I was just you just uh, you've been talking about the Western culture coming into Uganda. Yes. Of course, like for example, historically in um, the Congo yes. and a lot of Africa, there was a massive um, explosion of um, Cuban music. Yes. You know, in, yes. Uh, which of course then you know it, which uh, blossomed through you know great artists like Franco and, yeah. oh, and people like oh, that. Oh, so yeah. and and so. You know, I mean, of course, you know, and that's, of course, the other side of, of colonialism mm. and, and things like that. So you mm. get these influences, yeah, uh, which can be, you know, beneficial musically. Oh, absolutely. Um, so then, um, with the music you've been doing in the Gander Boys, mm. uh, this has expanded into, uh, you've got a foundation now as well. Yes, right? yes. Um, can you tell us what's happening with the, uh, what's the, what's the foundation about? Okay, so when we um, met Craig and uh, he exposed us to an, uh, an abled audience, uh, uh, white middle class, if I may say, and um, so we, we started singing and the, the audience um, started interacting. They wanted to know a little more about us and where we came from and we've, we've loved to serve from childhood we we've been in communities and and did a bit so when we realized that we could hold a conversation in in in, in, in service we picked interest and we put out there a few challenges that our people meet and uh, that way with Craig we came up with a, a framework through which we could uh, properly operate and that uh, we called the Ganda Foundation and uh, we started doing um, service work uh, for communities back in Uganda and uh, talking about it whenever we're given the opportunity to and we raised we've raised uh, quite a bit of awareness but also uh, you know help tangible help like uh, expertise in terms of taking knowledges and holding seminars back home um, hospital equipment from oxygenators to all operating tables to all sorts of, of things you see and uh, we've taken them back home and uh, educational material uh, laptops and uh, introducing little ones to IT and uh, taking t teachers with us to, to help in English mm. And, uh, you know, all these sorts of things. And conserving the culture, that's the other thing. And uh, conserving the culture, looking at conservation classes. What do you mean, when you say conserving the culture, you mean in terms of the music, the traditional music? In terms of the traditional music and uh, looking out, uh, you know, taking uh, people like Craig who know exactly how to record and, and, and to store. Um, how to give this sort of music a platform. Mm -hmm. It's like the Adungu is going places right now that it's never been, mm -hmm. you know. 
so you know but still that is part of our service work you know mm -hmm. which which sits with our music so we are very glad that along the way we've touched many souls then when we went to refugee settlement camps uh, we realized that the girl child was um, being kicked out of school prematurely mm -hmm. uh, due to period poverty you know and married off so a mother will you know, approached us and raised the problem, which is normally a taboo, you know, for men to speak about. We took it on and uh, we have literally lifted over 5,000 girls out of period poverty through reusable sanitary towels. And uh, now we're coming up with our own line so that we can, instead of buying, we can get the ladies, locals to make them. Mm. That way we can reach a few more, mm. you know, girls with the resources we have. So the journey, the service journey has been very fulfilling. And it's sustainable. You know, we say we use music to create awareness of the dire conditions. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. do you do that? Through music. But what, writing songs about it? Oh, example? yes, we write songs about it to mm -hmm. tell the story. Mm -hmm. uh, so for starters, most of the stories in our songs uh, tell a story of our culture and right. our ways and our norms. Mm -hmm. Then some of the songs tell of the situations that uh, require attention and need to be improved. And we speak straight through to policy makers, mm. to leaders who can actually do so much mm. to change some of these mm -hmm. situations. And have you noticed any, has it, have you seen where it's worked in terms of the influence you've had on policy makers? Yes, yes, through the beauty of the music and through reaching out to the audience. You see, the power sits with the people. Mm -hmm. The more our people, the bigger our audiences are, mm -hmm. the more the politicians succumb, mm -hmm. you know, and give you an ear. Because normally what you will be talking about won't be relatable to those that are comfortable. They just don't believe things like that happen. But the everyday person will believe. And the politician needs the everyday person for a vote. Mm -hmm. So once what you doing is popular with the masses, then definitely the politician picks up. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we've played the UK Parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly, we, we hope to... Uh, the problem is so huge, but we hope to chip a bit away. Please tell us about the Adongo. The Adungu. Oh, okay. Can we have take two on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adungu. This is the Adungu. Like Dennis says, it is uh, from the northern part of Uganda, right? Yeah, it is from the northern part of okay. Uganda. And uh, the strings used to be um, some uh, extract from extractions from plants, and uh, but we have modified them to those. And uh, it's so the strings at the moment are what? Are they? Um, are, what are they nylon. called? Nylon. Nylon. Yeah. Yes. 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 But it's it's the particular wood. Uh -huh. It's a particular tree um, that it's carved out of. It's dug in. And then uh, the skin, animal skin, that gives it that unique sound. sound. Mm -hmm. Snake skin? Yeah, yes. it is snake skin, yes. Right. Particular snake? Uh, python. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, in the Congo and in some parts of Africa, it, it's, it's a very nice delicacy. Yeah. So, so you get to eat the meat as so well. The, 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 the meat gets eaten. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the skin the gets skin used as well. For, creates the music, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, what are we going to sing next? What, what are you, you going to sing next? Rather? Um, we should sing him that song for for the people around the Nile. Oh, yes. Tienda. Tienda, yes. yes. We're going the, to do a Nile. song called Tienda. The, the, yeah. the Nile River? It's, it's a tribe, yeah. So, what, so, the Nile, is, is it, so the Nile goes all the way through Uganda as well? Oh, the Nile oh, yeah. starts its journey 3,000 miles from Uganda. Okay. That's where its source is. The source is so powerful. Water springs from the ground and also pours from the basin that's been named Lake Victoria. Originally, Narubari is mm. the original name. And it starts a journey very quietly and stretches for 3,000 miles. Mm. It's the only river that flows north. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other end, you have the Basoga tribe. And on this end, you have the Baganda tribe. And these people have looked after that source for thousands of mm. years. And the water keeps flowing. Mm. So when we do this chant, we think about the mm. culture. Mm. 
ways that have kept this place intact mm. that nobody ever recognizes. Mm. Mm. The, yeah. mm. Right. So the song is called Tienda. Tienda. Mm -hmm. You're joining. I see. I love. I, I love Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Feel the source of the Nile. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Amazing too. Because um, Uganda is is it one of the biggest countries in Africa, or is it? No, it's it's one, one of the, the it's yeah. one of the not one of the small ones, but it's one of those medium ones. Yeah. Yeah, but because when I when my when I first went to Africa, um, um, and to Gambia and Senegal. It helped me to understand actually there are all these different tribes yes. and each tribe actually has got some of some have got their own instruments, yes. their own music, their yes. own culture, their own yeah. traditions, mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's you know and it's the same in, in Uganda. Oh, it is. We have very many tribes. I think we speak more 52. than more, more than more, it's quite a good number of languages actually. And what what uh, so which is your tribe and which is your language? Our, our tribe is uh, the Ganda tribe, the Buganda tribe, and our language is called Luganda, mm -hmm. which is very similar to the Busoga tribe, which borders us on the other side of the Nile, and then Luganda sort of fades away as you go further east. And it also fades away as you go further north. So, you know, there are different migration routes that settle different types of people that settled into different tribes and ways and the way they related with the particular land they settled on. And um, that's the beauty of Uganda, these different languages and these different ways that all come together to master how to exist. Uh, 
you know, you, you united in a, in a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, um, each culture has its own instrument it identifies with. Some of the instruments are similar. They'll just be interpreted slightly different from uh, the features of the land that they occupy and the ways that they've adopted with over the years. So yeah, you'll find still chants. The chant we've just done is from the Busoga tribe. Um, but with the with the style of singing that you're doing, yes, in that you it seems to go between. Is that that's the traditional style in that you're you're kind of weaving, you yes. know, you're weaving the harmonies in yes. and out. So yes, you got the solo singer, but then yes. you're kind of weaving together. Yes. That's that's your traditional yes. style. Yeah, it's also very traditional because chanting is usually. Um, you, you know, we do it together. Collectively. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, this is just, uh, and, and harmonies come naturally, normally. So it's something we picked on right from an, an early age where mm -hmm. we we do solos and then weave them with a blend of another voice. And, then and, and with the songs that you've uh, you've written uh, since you've been in this country. Yes. Um, have you? I, I can imagine that maybe the, there's been a lot of influence from being in this country, in this culture, and yes. the influences that have come, yes. as opposed to if you'd have stayed in Uganda, for example. Yes. The influences start from uh, the fact that we were colonized by Britain. Uh, so it starts from, from home, from the education system being able to express ourselves in English and, and, and fairly write it. And then it comes to living here. Uh, it sort of makes a clear distinction between the, between the two cultures, uh, between the two styles, and how you can weave them together to create something so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, here influences us. It's like, how would the guitar sound with the adungo? You know, when does the guitar come in? And we interpret it in our own way, play it in a way that we feel it will sit comfortably with the adobo, you know, not overshadow it, you know. And, um, yeah, the ways of life here. And the how, lyrics. Yeah, yeah. The lyrics. Yeah. Well, Craig does how we write with Craig, mm -hmm. okay. who plays a very important role in uh, bringing the cores of the Western culture to our attention. Mm -hmm. So, yes, working from Williams, here, the recording facilities here, mm -hmm. you know, have given us the opportunity to record our music and, and, and put it out there. In and so history. you've been, uh, you, when, when you go back to Uganda, which you, you do regularly, yes. so you, you, you bring the songs back. Yes. And how are, the, how are the songs received? You know, I mean, the songs that you've written here uh, received in, in Uganda. Oh, in Uganda, they, they, they are adjusting to them because remember, we used to be their pop stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used to consume us that way, and we're taking a whole generation on a journey. And uh, but they they are amazed at, at how possible it is that the Western culture can even for a minute appreciate their own you know traditional songs and chants. Mm -hmm. So while we chant some of these, we are representing a whole forty five million people from the different tribes and different ways, mm -hmm. because there is mutual respect for the different tribes and many tribes know other tribes songs and they sing them and so you know the the, the, the culture has become very united it's become a ugandan culture more mm -hmm. more than a tribal culture so there's a, a lot of excitement hearing that we can actually sit a western audience and perform to it mm -hmm. our songs that mm -hmm. were at one point banned Mm -hmm. You know, it goes a very long way. We chant, we sing in English, and then come. We, everything we is, and then the English. everything is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, time for another song. Okay. Yeah. We <laughs> good to go. Um, there was one more in C, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. prayer. We we oh we got there was one more in C. Yeah. Okay, one more in C. We I thought we did that instrumental. No. Oh no, let's do the vocal sing. version. Now. Okay. Okay. Vocal version. Got it. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. 
Have you done now the Gander Boys? I think we have six. done about six. Yeah, the first one uh, was War of Love, War of Love yes. which was the result of Moses Jones. The Moses Jones. Jones. So that was one that came out yeah. of Moses Jones, right? Moses Jones, mm-hmm. yeah. and, 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 yes, 
And the next one was Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Many collaborations on there. Then the other one is Mountains of the Moon. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about the Mountains of the Moon? I have actually. Is that, um, isn't, I remember actually there was a documentary about yeah. famous train journeys. Yeah. And did it did it go up to the mount? Uh, something about the mountains of the moon. Um, is there a, is there a long tra- famous train journey involved with it? No? Maybe, Wait, yes. maybe I'm mixing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a very, very evocative title. You, anyway. you should <laughs> look up the mountains of the moon. Its history is so so real, and the mountains of the this, moon. This, this is the actual name of of the of yeah. mountains. They're called the, the mountains of the, the moon. The mountains yes. of the moon, Renzori. This is where our forefathers sat and ruled with um, ways that uh, the world doesn't know about, where they taught freedom, where they taught love, where they taught freedom of expression, where they developed uh, the writing, where there's interesting history about the mountains of the moon and it it sits between uh, Uganda and and the Congo and um, it's, it's amazing, it's a beautiful place and uh, lots of traditions and uh, it's linked to the, the, the journey of the Nile and uh, the indigenous who settled uh, in, 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 in further up the Nile and uh, did great things that the world uh, isn't aware that they did actually. So lots of interesting history. Mm-hmm. But uh, we did a song about uh, an album about the mountains of the moon, mm-hmm. so that was our third. That was our third, fourth, fourth. Yeah, fourth. And the fifth mm-hmm. is Baki Simba, yeah. where you have a lot of this. Baki Simba, the orchestra, yes. a full orchestra of, of, of Adungu. Of, of the Adungu. Mm-hmm. So we have the Adungu soprano, tenor, alto. Do you get Adungus traditionally playing more than one, or, or yeah, yeah, they play more than so one. So how many you get together? Yeah. How, many, how many? How many? How many will play together? Uh, like a whole uh, orchestra? About a whole orchestra of them, about five of them. Yeah. Mm. You know, with a bass, with a tenor. With oh, a so you get different sizes. Yeah, yeah. So this is what sort of size is this? this like is, a sort of this not is medium a, size or something? Yeah, yeah this, this is medium uh, size. It's medium size. It's yeah. a, it can do a soprano. Soprano. Or a yeah. So. Yeah, you you get and there are small ones that are solo. So mm-hmm. we and had, would they traditionally be played with other instruments as well? Yes. Or just oh yeah, yes. Like the xylophones, the madinda is on that album. We have the ndingidi. Mm-hmm. It's a lyre. Uh, that's what they call it in English. But um, you can. You mean it's bowed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Bold, yeah. yeah. That one as well sounds. It has a distinct sound. Mm-hmm. When it, when it goes, you just know mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. Yeah. We are here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, all these instruments. It was a, a full orchestra of them, and well, we fused them with the bass, guitar, and uh, powered the drum a little bit uh, with a drum kit, modern drum kit, to create a solid sound. So yeah, that's Baki Simba. Mm-hmm. And uh, the sixth now we on the fifth. Sixth. Yeah, sixth. Sixth is called Dance to the Twins. By, by the Ghana boys. boys. You see, my brother was talking about we were pop stars before. Yeah. Yes. So now the pop music, we reinterpreted it because the way we had recorded it previously was uh, in a makeshift. So we reinterpreted it with Craig and brought life to it and brought a few. So these are like really old songs. Yeah, they're that, that our old songs. From, from old songs yeah. from your past. Yeah. Well, so we brought them back and then we did that. And now we have one coming out next week. Uh, of the acoustic set, guitar and a new, a new album. Yeah, mm-hmm. we recorded it in Oxford during mm-hmm. a live performance, mm-hmm. and uh, that one is coming out soon. And we have another collaboration on so that will be also that's finalized. So all in all, I could say, by the end of next year, we'll have ten albums out mm-hmm. already. Yes, mm-hmm. and Craig has been very. Uh, central to the success of recording this music in the interest of keeping it there for generations to find it and uh, to relate to it, mm. you know, captured very well and kept mm. very well, yes. Mm. What song are we going to play next and uh, what is it about? Uh, we're going to play a song called Lisa and uh, this song was inspired by um, uh, the first time we played here in the audience was a very beautiful girl with blonde hair 
and uh, Danny couldn't play. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> you are leave you, me alone. Are you enjoying your interest? Leave me alone. <laughs> are you enjoying Why your, me? Are you enjoying your interest? <laughs> Let's just put it So, <laughs> this guy was so beautiful. And uh, when we got back home, he couldn't stop talking about her. Just kept talking about her, talking about her. So her real name, he didn't want, we didn't want to put her. So we said, you know what, why don't we actually do a little song about her? Because you're going on about her. So we thought about a name and we came up with a name called Lisa to mean this beautiful girl that uh, Danny picked great interest in. And how far have you gone? I have no <laughs> idea what he's talking about. <laughs> but of course, the the songs uh, have been written about beautiful girls forever ah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in all traditions absolutely uh, absolutely so it, it goes all the way it's it's a communication as well yeah it's a, it's a praise song yeah it is it is great okay It's a 
So, and also in, in, in Uganda, do you, uh, do you see there's a certain progression with the way the music's moving in terms of like uh, the, the songs that are coming out of Uganda is, uh, with, do, you know, do you know what I mean, within the, cult, yes. the music culture there? Yes. Um, it faces a big challenge. The music industry faces a big challenge. Uh, with them feeling comfortable in their skin and uh, producing music that is their own. We still sing a lot like the pop world stars. Uh, the West, Western pop stars. Western yeah. stars yeah. Yeah. We're still very much influenced. And um, we had a high school uh, teacher that was, head teacher that was a uh, um, a, a, a Welshman who really, really tried. He even wrote circulars to parents to almost stop them from watching the pop TV stations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you, know, you know, looking into the danger that it will cause to the art uh, industry. Um, so this is when you were brought up. This is when we were. You were brought yeah. up. The, you had a Welsh teacher. Yeah, we had a okay. Welsh teacher. Yes, so head teacher actually. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yes, we are doing so much in trying to influence the, the scene uh, to refocus and, and many are picking up and the audience is growing really, but we're going against a commercial scene that is very, very powerful. Um, but the, the traditional music is still very strong? <coughs> well, the traditional music is part of the day to day. It is really, really strong. Mm. But I mean, would you hear it on the radio, for example? Oh, the, yes, oh, yes, you would hear it on the radio. It's right. everywhere. But there, there is a very big force that, that's, mm. that's going against it. Mm. And we, 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 there, there is a battle in, in, in keeping it alive and keeping it going. Mm. Yes. Mm. Right. And um, what are, uh, are the particular um, artists in, in Uganda that you, you would mention that, that are kind of helping to support um, the, the more acoustic roots music there? Yeah, we have artists um, that, are, that are really rooted, like uh, we, we have Nanduja, who is a female traditional singer mm -hmm. who sings to the drum. And uh, we have, we used to have a great drama called Sam Peke. It was really good with the, with promoting the Ugandan drum sound. Um, currently, there are other youngsters that are taking it up and uh, that are trying to. We still, it's still traditional music on traditional weddings, traditional, you know, barrios and all of that. So the music is still very there. Um, shedding a lot more light on it not many artists are actually doing it you know but um but people are like at uh, traditional events like weddings people still want the traditional yeah, music yeah people still yeah. want the traditional music and mm. element mm. and on all the national functions Ceremony, you know yeah. ceremonies you have special troops you know uh there are troops that are doing um great great work um the name is there is Ndele troop but there is a this troupe where the star of Queen of Katwe, um, yeah, 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 the name escaped. But there is a star, a film star, Queen of Katwe, a young girl Indugu. called, called Ma, Ma, Madina mm. in, in Wundugu. Wundugu. You know, it's called Brotherhood Wundugu. And uh, they, they, they play so beautifully and it's all traditional and they have the orchestra of the core local instruments and the dance and the drums. Yeah. And, so yeah, it's 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 rooted. It's it's there. We just need to shed more light and to mm. support it in every way mm. we can. Right. Okay. Well, let's have one last song. Okay. <laughs> Not a problem. Please do join us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Try and stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.